Hello, everybody. This is Evan, founder and CEO of Gentatech, and we are back again with another high level overview. So, today we are going to be talking about Google Drive, particularly Google Drive for business use. Now, I think Google can do a better job of kind of explaining to people, whether it be through documentation or just marketing or even segregating this within the software itself. But I think they can do a better job of making sure the difference between Google Drive for a personal account and Google Drive for an organization slash business account is known. Um, it is not, unfortunately. So you find occasionally, uh, maybe frequently, businesses getting themselves into a tangled net of mixed permissions and ownership and a whole mess that can actually happen if you don't know what you're doing with Google Drive. So the purpose of this video is to rectify that. What we're going to be reviewing today is how Google Drive is supposed to work and how you're supposed to use it from the standpoint of a business and organization. So what we're gonna do is look at this from a 50,000 foot view and explain this conceptually speaking. We're not gonna go through the process of setting up a Google Drive or sharing folders or getting inside of the Google software at all. What we're gonna do is kind of build things out here and so you can see how things are supposed to work for a personal account and then for a business slash organization. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And uh, please excuse me and forgive me. I am a little under the weather, uh, but we're going to go ahead and get through this. My voice may be a little stuffy, but uh, let's go ahead and proceed. So on the left side here, we see we have a personal account. And you can see this with example at gmail.com. And then in this personal account, we have this Google Drive, which is listed under my drive. And if you log into Google Drive and look at the left hand side, your left hand panel, You'll see a list as of at least, you know, uh, April 21st, I think today is, 2023. You'll see priority, my drive, shared drive, shared with me, recent start, trash, and storage. So this is under my drive. Now, this is the traditional way that people use this. And so we're going to see some of the impacts that gets kind of incorporated on the back end that you don't really get to see until it becomes too late when you use a drive like this. So let's go ahead and say this. Let's say this example at gmail.com has created a, uh, a drive, and in that drive, there's a couple of different folders for whatever it may be, photos, videos, all the good stuff. And let's say they wanna share these folders and the contents in them with some users outside of his personal Gmail account, which theoretically then would be anybody who wants access. So what will happen then is you'll have a user here, all right? We'll go ahead and copy this. There we are, okay. Now, the owner of this drive, which is going to be example at gmail.com, has the ability to give all of these people here access to everything within said drive, uh, just with a few share settings. So he can make sure that this person here has access to this drive, okay. Go ahead and drop this person down. He can make sure this person here has access to this drive, and he can make sure this person here has access to this drive. So pretty straightforward. This is how most people use Google Drive as is. And this is kind of why it's such a well-known and well-used software, because when it pops in front of your face, it really is that easy to start plugging and playing and kind of getting things done and giving people access to files and folders, right? Looks good. Well, for a business, this is actually detrimental. There are some things going on behind the scenes here that can absolutely ruin a business's access to their data forever indefinitely with nothing that Google themselves can do. So that's why it's so important to understand what we're about to discuss here. So if let's, let's just say this, let's say that uh, in this exact example here, before we go ahead and use it for a business case, let's say that there's another user over here. Okay. And let's say that this user wants to go ahead and own everything within this drive. So maybe example at gmail.com. And this person could be something like, uh, maybe uh, info at gentatech.com, okay? Now this user here wants to own everything within this folder. Let's say that all of this stuff here is pertaining to business. So example at gmail.com is an employee of Gentatech. Gentatech has tasked this person with the duty to go ahead and create a couple of folders and share them with people inside of the organization, outside of the organization, whatever it may be. Well, let's say that uh, example here is going to go ahead and leave, right? Because they maybe got a new job or they're leaving state, whatever it may be. So Gentatech would like to obviously take this here and take ownership of the drive and maintain all of these relationships here. 
just like so, right? The business gets to keep all of this stuff and this person gets to go on their way. Unfortunately, that is impossible with this structure here. Because see what happens is when you create a Google Drive in My Drive, the creator of the file, folder, and drive is forever the owner of said file, folder, and drive. Here's a caveat, unless they want to transfer. But the issue is Google by default, and de facto I should say, because there's no way to change this, does not let you transfer ownership of anything between different organizations. So the way that Google looks at it is this personal account is considered its own organization. So if we have the business over here, which can be info at gentatech.com. Oh, spelled it wrong. There we go. If the business is over here, which would be a separate organization, Google does not allow anything from this organization to be transferred over to this organization in terms of ownership. So if Gentatech is tasking all of its employees with these duties to create Google Drives and share folders and files with all, all the vendors, partners, clients, whoever it may be. What's actually happening is there is a plethora of data being generated outside of the organization that Gentatech could never and will never be able to own. Tragic, right? So a business and their and their data is it's a it's a very important relationship. Uh, data really is business these days. So how do we prevent this? What can we do to use Google Drive to make sure that this doesn't happen? Well, thankfully, there is a solution, and that solution is called shared drives. So let's go ahead and put this here. Excellent. Shared drives. So the administrator for Gentatech would create what you call a shared drive under the label shared drives. It's going to be right under the label my drive on Google Drives. And the function of this behind the scenes is going to work a little bit differently. So you have shared drives, and then we have a couple of folders here under these shared drives, just like so. Now, the great thing about this is everything within a shared drive is automatically owned by the organization. So that's going to be an important point to remember, and we'll come back and touch on that. So I'll say that one more time. Everything created under a shared drive is owned by the organization. So the workflow could look very, very similar. So let's say info at Gentatech, which is the organization, take somebody and maybe this is, I don't know, let's say sales at Gentatech. And this is going to be an individual user running this account here. So we'll go ahead and put that on top of there just so you can have a nice visual. Let's move these things down. Excellent. And let's go ahead and throw this over here and throw this over here. Okay, so now Gentatech has tasked the user sales at Gentatech to create some files and folders for access to whatever it may be for employees, partnerships, all that good stuff like that. So sales goes, they, they, they do that. They do so, and then there's going to be some groups, some people who want to go ahead and have access to this. So let's go ahead and find some. Let's just go people. Oh, let's do users. We'll get a group of users here. There we go. All right, so there's some groups. Excellent. Now these groups will have access to this here, okay? Just like so. Very, very similar, very similar. Now the great thing here is, Let's say that this user and this email, for some reason, depart from the company. Maybe this user is moving states. And then, um, you know, maybe there's a change in email structure. So sales at gentatech.com and this user disappear. Well, unlike the personal account here under my drive, meaning all of this content would disappear with that user or forever be remained as owned by that user, it changes here. It's completely different. Everything that's ever created under the shared drive is owned by the Gentatech domain. So regardless of who comes and goes, the ownership is going to stay with the company and be retained with the company. Now that sounds pretty simple and it is in theory, uh, but it can be pretty powerful uh, because the things that you can do with it are very, very important. So for example, let's say that we hire uh, some contractor. Maybe this contractor is gonna do something like web design, all right? And maybe this folder over here is going to be, you know, all the branding content, okay? Excellent. Now, let's say that this web designer obviously needs access to this branding content folder so they can see everything the company has done so far, what the company stands for, all that good stuff like that. But, you know, they're creating something new. 
So after they get access to this folder here, they're going to be also contributing to said folder. So let's go ahead and get an arrow here, little line. There we go. And throw that here. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So they have access to this folder, which is fantastic, but they're going to be creating new things within this folder. Okay. So thankfully under shared drives, anything that is created or contributed, it doesn't really matter which way you, you know, which term you use, anything that this web designer does inside of the shared drive is automatically owned by the organization. So they can come in and make their contributions. All right. This access is severed for security reasons. You only want to give temporary access to people outside of your organization, but everything that they contributed is therefore owned by the company. You can't really beat that. That is going to be the only way that you need to move forward and that you want to move forward. That's going to be the only way that's going to allow you to keep access to your data. Now, this is good. This is a good uh, solution, but there are a few things to know and a few things to understand in terms of permissions and kind of default security access, things of that nature. So anybody who has access to a shared drive will have access to everything within that drive, all right? And in addition to that, whatever role you give them within that shared drive will apply to everything in that shared drive. So there are a couple of things that we can do that would be very big security risks in terms of creating a shared drive. So this is what you don't want to do. So let's go ahead and say we just had one big shared drive and this shared drive was just called, you know, Jitsa Tech uh, File Share, something like that, okay? And we'll drop this here. And then under this file share here, we have, you know, maybe banking documents. And then maybe something like uh, intern docs. Excellent. And then something like, mm, something like legal documents. All right. Excellent. So now remember, all of these folders here live inside of this drive. And just to make this a little bit easier on the eyes here, let's go ahead and use the same drive logo. There we go. So all of this here, banking docs, intern docs, and legal docs, belongs to the Gentitech file share. So if you give somebody access to the Gentitech file share, what you're doing is giving them access to everything within that shared drive. Everything. That means if I want to give an intern access to maybe some branding documents and I do it the wrong way, I've also given them access to the banking documents, the legal documents, so on and so forth. So there is a best practice here and we'll go over that quickly. So what you're going to want to do in a situation like this, you're going to want to create multiple drives here. So maybe this drive is, you know, an admin drive. And then maybe this drive here would be, oh goodness. We'll call this the intern drive. That sounds good. And maybe this right here will be, um, I don't know, marketing. All right. So these are three separate shared drives. Okay just like so. So they all share this shared drive label here. We'll go ahead and delete this so nice and easy to look at. All right. Now under these shared drives, instead of giving and provisioning access to this based on individual users and individual emails, which you, which you can do, what would be wise would be if we created groups. So we'll go ahead and go to here and we'll go ahead and pop another user. And let's say we have these individual groups inside of the organization. And these groups here have individual names. So this could be the admin group, the intern group, and the marketing group. Oh goodness, there we go. Now, instead of giving individual users access, what we can do is we can give these groups access to said drives. Intern drive, marketing group, and admin group. So admin group has access to admin drive. Intern group has access to intern drive. And the marketing group has access to the marketing drive. And then if we want to add people to the groups, we can go ahead and do that and take people away. We can do that as well. Now, the great thing here is you can actually set rules. Well, there's two sets of permissions. You have permissions within the drive itself. So 
you have different levels of permissions. You have a manager and a contributor and a viewer and things of that nature. We're not going to get into permissions and what they mean in this particular video. We just want to keep this as short as possible so you get the idea of how Google Drive works. And we can dig into that in later videos. Uh, but you have access permissions that you can control from the drive itself. But you also have permissions that you can control per group. So we recommend building out groups and then making sure those permissions are, are accurate. And then, then giving those groups access to said drive. And that's really how you want to do it. So working under this structure, no matter who comes in the company or who comes out, who's added, who's not, if you share inside of the organization or outside of the organization, regardless of what's done, as long as it's done inside of a shared drive, the company, the organization, the domain will forever retain ownership. So this is what you want. Likewise, if we go here and use Google Drive in the traditional way, the way that most people do it, just kind of build something under my drive and share that access. Whoever creates the file, folder, share, whatever you want to name it, will permanently retain ownership of that. And it particularly gets very, very sticky if you have a personal account, build that out because not only can you not transfer between a personal account and a business account, de facto is just not allowed, uh, that, that personal account doesn't have anybody else in their organization to transfer to. So for example, if info at Gentatech here, and we'll go ahead and copy and paste this, is replaced with this, and this email creates these drives under my drive, at least they will have the opportunity to transfer this ownership to somebody else in the same domain. So they could transfer all of this ownership to sales at gentatech.com, right? So that's still not ideal, right? But it's not as bad as a personal account creating something and then therefore not having the possibility to transfer ownership of those files or folders to the domain, meaning that if you don't do this the right way, you could get in a position uh, where your domain actually owns nothing but has a ton of data that's generated for it over a long period of time. So that's what we want you to avoid. So that is a high level overview of how to use Google Drive for Business. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email us at info at drop a comment, uh, a like and subscribe would go a long way for us. I appreciate you watching and we will see you next time.